And welcome to Scarlet and Great, the Scarlet and Great Empire. Ohio State Football with Scarlet and Great on YouTube. Guys, big things to talk about today. But first, I want to talk to you all for just a second. Do a little housekeeping before we get into it. Please, I am asking everybody who, if you're watching this video, please subscribe if you like the channel. We're trying to get to 1,000 subscribers so we can qualify for the YouTube Partner Program. And when we get to 1,000 subscribers, we're going to do a giveaway, some mugs, some shirts, some uh, Scarlet and Great gear. Uh, but why do you, why should you subscribe, you're asking? Because we're a show that talks about rumors, talks about information, talks about camp updates, all kinds of different things, all related to Ohio State sports, football, basketball, what have you. Uh, you will not regret it. Your money back guaranteed if you're not satisfied. And with that being said, joining me today, the Game Time Guru, the Boise Buckeyes, Shane Larson, family here at Scarlet and Great. How you doing, buddy? Good, man. I'm uh, stoked to be here with you today, Corey, and uh, talking some Ohio State football, brother. Absolutely. we got a three-parter video for you. Uh, not We're going we're gonna to cut this into three videos for you all just to warn you up front. There's going to be three parts to this, but for those who listen on the audio, it will be an entire podcast, so don't worry. Uh, guys, we're going to talk about three different things today. We're going to talk about Greg Studd, uh, Coach Studd. I don't know how to say his last name. I, I give up. <laughs> I cannot say his last name. I don't, have, I don't have a sophisticated enough tongue to do it. Coach Studd and the heat he's getting – for potentially losing out on uh, uh, offensive lineman Goodwin out of Indiana, who's a really top flight offensive lineman. Uh, a lot of fans are questioning him right now. We're also going to talk about the running back situation going on at Ohio State right now because it. I, I'm sorry, Anderson's looking special, and it's getting a little bit to be dicey. It's getting a little dicey now. Uh, whereas we all thought, okay, it's Teague and everybody else. Oh, I don't know about any of that anymore. Uh, and also we're going to talk about the quarterback situation a little bit uh, So, because obviously that's a hot topic at Ohio State. Shane, starting with Coach Stud. Coach Stud, man. Uh, I'll tell you, he's getting a lot of heat. Goodwin looks like he's going to Kentucky. I have a few points on this, uh, but I do want to start off with you. I don't want to leave you hanging too long here, buddy. So uh, give me your first initial thoughts on the fan reaction to Coach Stud, because right now it's not so positive. Yeah, uh, I, I'm going to tell you this right now. And for all the fans out there, listen, I think it's unfair. And I think that might, you know, ruffle some feathers a little bit, but it's unfair, the fan reactions, because the fan reactions – typically are starting to swing a little bit towards the negative side, uh, the frustration. And Coach Studd has been always he's, – he's, it's been the, this way from the beginning. He's a patient – he takes a patient approach to recruiting. Um, so I think it's unfair. So I'm going to leave it at that. We're, we'll hear your points, but I think it's unfair. And I'll get to my points in just a minute, Corey. But I think it's unfair if you're leaning on the side of negative towards Coach Studd. I'm going to make one initial point to people who we lost out on J.C. Latham uh, – I cannot remember the other Kentucky lineman we lost to at Burton. I think his name was a guard. He was a really good player. Uh, now we're losing out on good one, it looks like. Kentucky, first of all, is starting to recruit offensive linemen pretty well. I, I, I actually have a friend at, at my gym whose son is an offensive lineman, one of the top centers in the country for a sophomore, and he's been recruited by Clemson, Penn State, you know, whatever. Um, he's, he was talking to me a little bit about some of the some his friends who got recruited to Kentucky. Kentucky's starting to recruit a little bit better, the offensive line. It just is what it is. But – if a kid goes to Kentucky, he wants to be at Kentucky. He's not choosing them over Bam and Ohio State because Kentucky's just that great of a program. He wants to be there for whatever reason. I can't even explain it, but whatever. Um, okay, but we have to understand something here. We lost these kids in a COVID year where they're not allowed to visit Ohio State. I understand that guys like Hartline, we're spoiled by guys like Hartline, who is the best recruiter I may have ever seen at, at, a, at college. He's unreal. He could just pick whatever receiver he wants. Um, but not everybody can be Heartline, and sometimes you just have to have that little extra oomph. You you have to get these kids on campus in order to get them to commit. And if Stud is not good enough to do it without that, I mean, I'll acknowledge that. But that doesn't mean he's a horrible recruiter. We do have a pretty decent roster on the offensive line if you look at it. And he's been here since 2016, so you can't claim, well, that's Wariner's guys. These aren't Wariner's guys. Um, so I, I would like people to like consider that. Like, yes, I understand he's not Heartline, he's not Larry Johnson, but I mean he, he it's not like the roster's terrible and you gotta you gotta account for co this weird COVID year. Totally. It's an unprecedented season. Um it, it's weird. It is that's the best way to put it. And keep in mind, I was I was talking to Corey offline beforehand. You know, the the brand recruits itself. Yes, you have some of the guys like Hardline in there that can recruit their butts off. And I'm going to give you guys an example from Boise State University. Like these smaller schools, yes, you've got to go out there and just 
because you're you're trying to compete to grab some of these three star guys like you're, you're lucky to land a four and when you happen to land a five you're like oh my gosh but you're out there trying to get everybody so for example coach harson who is now with auburn uh when he got here with coach mike sanford when they took over for coach chris peterson at boise state i mean it was just an immediate attack trying to get everybody over here the recruiting was unbelievable but at Ohio State, you don't have to do that. Um, and, and I don't want you guys to take that the wrong way, but just understand that the brand recruits itself. You're going to get receivers to come here. You're going to get these guys to come here. And Coach Stud can coach, okay? And so that's what he's been asked to do as you know, with the line. If you can coach, that's what matters. And, and I think if any of us use our brains for just a quick second, they're really productive on the offensive line. Sure, they've had a couple of uh, – you know, it takes them a couple games to get going. And that's, I think that's the same for anybody, but you see that there's, there's some lapses here and there, but that's with every single team. But typically speaking, I mean, there's a reason Trey Sermon was able to run the way he did. It's not just because of his athleticism. Yes, that's a big part of it, but there is a reason because that offensive line manhandled everybody. And then if you look back at the Clemson game, we owned the trench, not just on the defensive side of the ball, on the offensive side of the ball. So keep in mind, he knows how to coach. So it's hmm. just like, if you have a, a CEO of a company, guys, Sometimes they just have to sit back as long as they can manage and as long as they can build the team that comes there. If you build it, they will come. And that's what's happening with Ohio State. And like you said, Corey, I agree. Um, if you can get these kids on campus and stuff, I mean, Ohio, it'll it'll sell itself. But we we had a weird season. So let's be patient. Give some grace for everybody. Give some grace for everybody here. And then that point about Kentucky was actually a pretty good one because Kentucky's on the rise as much as we don't want to say that. Their football program is actually on the rise. So it's not like it's this rinky dink podunk thing in my opinion i think that they actually are on the rise but if they want they're going to Kentucky because they want to go to Kentucky. like i mean it's true but they are on the rise so it's not like we lost out to some bums you know what i mean yeah i i agree and again bama lost a kid too it isn't like it, it's can they not recruit anymore i mean look i want to go over real quick all right since i don't want to spend forever on this obviously i know a lot of people are going to feel how they feel no matter what look at the offensive line we have the, the bookend tackles okay Nicholas Petit, Freer, Thayer Munford. Thayer Munford was a guy who was an afterthought when Stud was recruiting him, right? Nobody wanted him. I mean, Michigan State may have ended up with him. Now he is a premier left tackle in college football. He is one of the premier left tackles, and he's going to be a high draft pick. Uh, Nicholas Petit, Freer, the light has gone on for him. He was the number one tackle in the country when we recruited him. I'm not saying Stud did that alone. Obviously, Urban had a lot of hand in that. But that being said, he's developed him because he needed a lot of help when he got here. Now he's a – look – he had a stud year last year. Nicholas uh -huh. Petitfer is absolutely amazing. He's living up to the hype. Uh, look at now we look. We got he kept, he held on to five star Harry Miller. I know Harry Miller wasn't as impressive last year, but give him time. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, but he held on to five star Harry Miller when Urban Meyer retired. A legend retired, and Greg Stud gets Ryan Day took Coach Stud with him to Atlanta, or wherever in Georgia they were. And said, hey, stick with us, believe in us. And they believe him. You, you Listen, Miller ain't coming if you don't believe in Coach Stud. Paris yeah, Johnson Paris Johnson came out and said, I am not coming to Ohio State if Coach Stud gets fired. And they retained Coach Stud, and we retained Paris Johnson. Three of the four there are, are absolute starters that I just mentioned uh, that are they're almost uh, borderline. They're five-star or borderline five-star. I mean, Munford was a, a low four-star, but the rest are five-stars. Yep. Uh and then you got Dewan Jones, who's a three-star from Indiana, who looks really good from what we've seen. Matt Jones was the number one center in the country when we recruited him. Now he looks really good. Uh, remember when we needed a late night or late uh, signing depth at guard? We got Enoch Viamahi out of nowhere from Hawaii, four-star kid. We were all excited about that. Ryan Jacoby, a local kid who's actually looked pretty good. Josh Fryer, three-star from Indiana, another one, uh, three-star special, who's now getting reps with the ones. We're exactly. developing him pretty quickly. I'm sorry. There is a lot of good here with Coach Stud. Hey, There's a lot of good. What you're saying right there, Corey, for all those listening, first off, leave us in the comments what your opinions are right now because we yes. want to interact with you guys. So put, put some in the comments. If you're watching this on YouTube, let us know what you think about the situation with Coach Stud. But, Corey, after you just said that, I think a, another word comes to my mind, and it's spoiled. I think, uh, and, and that's okay. Like us as Buckeyes fans, that, we hold ourselves to a higher standard, right? We want to win. We mm -hmm. want to have – perfection that's kind of what it is that's why they're so successful as a program but i think we're spoiled because every name you're just mentioning right there teams across the country the majority of them would be blessed to have what we have the situation that we have so when we're looking at it i, I think it's i think we're spoiled Corey. Hey, you know and i forgot another name luke, luke whipler another high that's ranking whip. center we got out of high school i mean it's just who's actually doing really well in, in practice right now i mean it's like 
guys, the depth is better than it's been in years. Look, with Ed Warner, uh, we our depth was terrible. And Urban Meyer decried it every year. Every year at his opening day press conference, well, depth at offensive line is a problem. We got to develop it. We got to get better at it. Recruiting was a problem on the offensive line. At Ohio State, it shouldn't be a problem. I understand that uh, Stud has missed out on a couple, on a, well, pun intended, some studs. But that being said, I'm not saying he's the greatest recruiter. I mean, he's probably not. He's probably the least uh, recruiter on the staff, okay? Because you look at everybody else, they're just amazing. I will give you that. But is he so bad he needs fired? Not when he's developing kids the way he's developing them and not when he's recruiting well enough to we have offensive lines that are actually pretty dominant. Now, granted, we get to Bama, they weren't dominant. Okay, you know who Bama is. You know Nick Saban's a different animal up in, uh, down in Tuscaloosa. But as far as like the rest of college football, we were dominant. So let's let's calm down just a little bit with the uh, fire calls for firings. Yeah, and and let's all remember. I know it's hard to remember this and and think of it. Okay, first off, unprecedented season. We had what handful of games. Okay, so by the time we got to Bama, I mean it's not like we we were just starting to find our role, but it wasn't even like we were we were injured. Sermon goes down, all that stuff. There's a lot of things that happened. So let's not forget that. And secondly, we were actually matching with them point for point, touchdown for touchdown for the first, what, three possessions of the game, three three touchdowns of the game, and then our defense started to falter. So it wasn't just like the offensive line fell apart necessarily. It was everything else too. So let's let's not forget that. And I think what you said, Corey, I think all the fans need to listen here. Come on. like you, it, He's not. He's probably our least, least recruiter of, of the team, if you will. But I think that's exactly – going back to our point, you don't need to be. When everybody else is doing it, it, it they know what his skill set is. His strength is this. Why work on your weaknesses necessarily when you can hone in on your strengths and you've got so much depth that we haven't had for so long? Now you got to polish these guys up. Obviously, the system that Ohio State's running, the coaching staff and everything else, it's working. So Coach Stud doesn't have to be out there actively recruiting. He needs to develop the guys that are getting in there because we've got five-star recruits, four-star recruits across the board and some three-star studs like you were just talking about all across the board. And he just needs to develop them because we've got legitimate NFL talent on that line. Absolutely. So that's that will do it for part one. I think we made a case. Leave a comment whether you agree or not. Uh, if you don't, that's awesome. Still talk to us. Still let us know what you think. If you do, awesome as well. Let us know what you think. Guys, we'll be back for part two here in just a second. Yeah.